Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. I am so glad to see you all. And I love this chat going on. This is so fun when I jumped in and saw y'all were chatting already about the space launch. And um, I have so many thoughts about that, quite frankly, because um, I don't quite understand how it takes years to prepare and months to prepare the astronauts to go on a space mission. But it seems these people that are going out into space, it's just one day they decide that they're going to do it and they announce it. So I don't watch the news. I haven't seen anything about what this launch was. So I, I can't um, I can't speak to it fully, but I do have that as a question in the back of my mind. Is this really happening? Are they truly launching people out to space and and even at that if they are um are they just kind of going to the brink of our atmosphere and then returning and is that really going into space i don't know these are all my questions i have a daughter who loves outer space she loves the cosmos i have studied quantum physics a little bit very little bit and i love quantum physics i could get all into that i love that whole topic so i found it fun to jump in and see you all talking about that anyway i am tanya joy gibson welcome to beauty for ashes for those of you that are new i am so glad to see you here today joining us as we finish this amazing study on the life of esther and her story and um her testimony and the testimony of the people that were involved with her, her uncle Mordecai and King Xerxes and even the, the evil Haman, right? We have to have, there's always in any story, there is always good versus evil. And so this is, this is part of the story. Sorry, I'm watching some of this chat at the same time. It's so fun um, to see you all. And thank you for jumping on early this morning. Um, my schedule is a little bit different today, and so I was not going to be able to jump on it at the end of the day. And I was able to during lunch. So I thought, I thought let's just jump in and um, see what we can do here. So we are finishing this book. This is a very short chapter. Um, chapter 10, very short, pretty much one big paragraph, but it's an important one because it's important to see where Mordecai ends up. We've kind of finished the book and it, you know, it's interesting when we look at this story because Queen Esther, as we know, is kind of the main character, right? Or at least the one that we think of most of the time being the book of Esther, but the character of Mordecai is really and truly just as much a main character as Esther is. If it wasn't for Mordecai, this all wouldn't have played out the same. If Mordecai hadn't have been willing to not consent, to not bow down to the evil Haman, if he had not been willing to stand on the outside of the king's gate, like why was he always there? That's a question I have. He knows his his niece or his daughter, whichever you want to call it. I like to say both because he raised her. So he was her father, but he was her uncle too. Um, but she was in the palace. She she was safe, I would think. She's, you know, the queen. She's in there. She's doing her thing. Why did he stay always outside the gate? Because it seems he would be there a lot. If if it was something that was now again, we'd have to dive into the history and maybe he maybe he worked out there, maybe who knows? I don't know the backstory. So I'm not presuming anything. I don't want to put false things out there. I didn't study why was Mordecai always out there. But it seems he had to have been outside that gate for quite a while, or else it wouldn't have probably bothered Haman, right? For him to have been out there one or two times, Haman wouldn't have probably made such a big deal about it. But he was out there over and over and over, right? And so if he wouldn't have been, let's just take a step back. If he wouldn't have done that, if he wouldn't have been out there as often as he was, if he wouldn't have been out there, and I see you guys chatting, we are going to pray. Joni, we will pray for your pain um, and healing 
Definitely. And when we get to the end, since this is a short um, chapter, if anybody else has any other prayer things, let's stick them in there and we'll pray through those. Um, but when we back this up, back to, to Mordecai, if it wasn't for Mordecai, this whole story would have gone a totally different direction. Esther would have still been queen, but this wouldn't have been brought up and the enemy would not have been revealed had Mordecai not been the one standing out there willing to not bow to the evil. And so that's a huge thing to remember. And I think that's why the end of this chapter focuses on Mordecai. This is, this is a rags to riches story, a Cinderella story, as many people have, have taught Esther can be a Cinderella story. She was an orphan. She becomes the queen. But that also happens to Mordecai. Mordecai is a character that is just as important, if not more important, right? I don't, I mean, you know, there's not a more or less than, but he is just as important because he is the one who revealed the enemy's tactics. He is the one who had it all documented. He is the one behind the scenes who had all of the money documented, had all of the orders, the edicts, all of the, the words that were spoken. He had that all recorded. So that when it was Esther's for such a time as this moment, he could give her, ooh, this gives me chills. Wow. Yes, Lord. Wow. 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 Let me see if I can figure out how to say this. Watch. Watch for those around you who are the ones who have all of this information ready for when you get brought into your for such a time as this moment, they will have it, the information and the documentation and the ways to expose the enemy. Esther didn't have that information. That's important to note. Esther did not know. She was in the inner courts. She was in the government. She was in that seat of authority, but she did not know that Haman had these plans. She did not know that her people were getting ready to be assassinated and annihilated. That was put in order and written out while she lived in the very same castle. While she was in her part of the king's castle, he was in another signing these executive orders of death. So I feel as though this just this fell on me as I was saying this, that we need to be very aware and watchful for those around us who are our Mordecai. We need to be discerning, but we need to watch for our Mordecai. Wow. Okay, we're going to jump into this. I hope that's beneficial to somebody. I know it. I know that it's it was for me. I definitely know it was for me, but I hope that it was for you as well. Um, because I don't want to just say something for no reason, but I feel like that's definitely something that um is for everybody. All right, and we are gonna pray. Um, I see Joni, you mentioned about um the pain. There's somebody else I'm praying for, and we'll throw her in here as well. Same situation is struggling with massive pain after having COVID. And uh, let's see, back pain, we will pray for all of that and your knees. So Joni, this is interesting. My other friend who is struggling with um, residual pain after COVID, it's all her joints as well. This, this virus, I have to be careful what I say, this virus is very, um, it's very evil. It, its roots are evil. And we don't, we have to remind ourselves, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities and, and, and God already died for our healing and health. And so we are fighting against evil 
the fall is what caused sickness and death. And so we are fighting against that. And and this is a real virus. I'm not, I've never been one to say this was not a real one, but it, it is real and it is stoked in evil. It was created for destruction. It is evil by its roots. So I believe that's the direction to pray when we're praying against that. So we will do that. Let's pray first just to open this up. Then let's read the word and then we will pray for healing. How about that? All right. And I do have to watch my time because I have to get back to work. So let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, Yeshua HaMashiach, we come to you today on October 13th, God, the year of 2021. And I want to first start by saying thank you for putting us here for such a time as this. Thank you, God, that you chose each and every person who is listening to this broadcast now or in the future for such a time as this. You could have put us at any point in history and you chose right now. You chose this point in time for each of us. We are not here by accident. We are here for a plan and a purpose, and that is to advance your kingdom. We are daughters of the Most High King and sons of the Most High King. That makes us princes and princesses. We are royalty, God. You have made us royalty. God, I ask that as as we pray right now, that each person listening will have a sense of you extending your scepter to them. Yes, Lord. God, I pray that every person listening and watching will have a moment right now where they sense you placing the crown on their head, anointing them the princess and the prince that they were created to be in such a time as this. Allow the weightiness of your presence to be the thing that we feel and experience over any other thing in this earth. God, I pray that these words would come alive today, that they would speak to our hearts and our souls and our minds. Thank you already for your revelation. Thank you so much, God, that you speak to each of us, that you long to speak to each of us. Thank you for recording the story of Esther, God, for us to learn from. And God, we pray now a protection over this broadcast. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. Our fight is against powers and principalities and things unseen. And Lord, by your stripes, we are healed. And we are commanded and given authority to walk in that authority that Jesus had and that he gave us. And so therefore, we stand in agreement and we say to any enemy or evil doing that is out there trying to thwart, harm, cancel, mute, silence this broadcast that in the name of Jesus, you are taken down and you are silenced and sent back to the pit from which you came, that they be mute, deaf, dumb, blind, and sent into utter chaos back to hell. Father God, I ask that all the words that come forth from me today are true, that you will not let me speak things that are untrue, that you will fill me with your words, And that you will bless and honor this time as we honor you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. My goodness. Didn't expect to be having all this today. Okay. We are in Esther 10. And this is about Mordecai. This is the end of Mordecai's story. And I love that this was entered into this story. King Xerxes imposed tribute throughout the empire to its distant shores and all his acts of power and might together with a full account of the greatness of Mordecai to which the king had raised him. Are they not written in the book of annals of the kings of Media and Persia? 
That means that all of the things about Mordecai, everything that they did, everything that he touched and interacted with is documented. And these books are historical books. I've tried to look them up, actually, because I believe that they are out there. I don't know if they've been found. I, I would imagine that these, these historical books of the kings are, you know, probably somewhere. They're probably hidden some somewhat, but that would be a fun search to do sometime. Here's what it goes on to. The last sentence, verse three. Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to King Xerxes. Preeminent among the Jews and held in high esteem by his many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of all the Jews. Mordecai became second in command, you guys. Mordecai did not consent, did not comply, and became second in command to the empire. Isn't that just beautiful? So that is the book of Esther. And what a lovely, lovely story it is. And I'm seeing some of you, I have not heard of Superbook. Um, I don't know what that is. Is that a, is it a show? Is it a book? I don't know anything about that, but I'm curious. I'm going to have to look it up now, but I will say, interestingly enough, and who knows if it's because my phone's listening to me or not, but I got an alert yesterday or an email that Esther has been made into a musical with the sight and sound theater. And I believe it is going on right now. I believe it's it, it potentially in Pen Pennsylvania. It's, I think, somewhere on the East Coast is where I saw it. Well, they have turned it into a beautiful musical. And it looked to me, when I, I looked it up, you can watch it online through PayPal for $9.99. And it's through the Sight and Sound Theater, which is the largest stage theater ever. The stage it for Sight and Sound is always bigger than any Broadway stage. They have live animals. Um, it's it's unbelievable. I have I am going to Branson this winter, and I'm so excited to be able to go and see a live Sight and Sound a show. I have yet to see one. Um, I believe that we're going to get to see the Jesus one, and they they basically are Christian theater that are bringing to life different parts of scripture. And they did one on Esther. So look it up. It's the sight and sound theater experience for Esther. And you can get it on um, PayPal and watch it for $9.99. I'm going to try and do it this weekend. Um, after finishing this study, I am very curious. I want to, I want to see it. And they, they have music. It's a full musical. Um, so all right, we're going to pray for healing. Um, I do not know what we're going to do next, so I will probably not do a live tomorrow um, until I seek the Lord. I've, I've got a couple ideas in my head of the next book to go through, but I'm not exactly sure yet. So I need to seek the Lord and ask him to give me some answers on that and let me know which one he wants us to move on to because um, I just don't know. So. Let's pray for some healing. We are going to pray for Joni and Lynn. Lynn, you're back. And um, Joni, your, your knee and these effects of COVID. And um, yeah, if anybody else has anything, stick it in there. Um, I know that there's been healings. We've prayed and, and some people have experienced awesome healings. So uh, you know what? Unless we ask, we don't receive. So we are going to go and ask the Lord for healing right now. So Heavenly Father, the great physician, we come to you knowing you are our great physician, knowing you are the healer of all disease, of all pain, of all sorrow. And we know that you have asked us to come to you when we are sick, to come to you when we are in pain, 
instead of going, it doesn't mean we can't go to doctors, Lord. We know you have given doctors brilliant minds and the ability to heal. But God, I also know that you are the great healer and you are the great physician. And we know that this virus is very evil. We know that this virus has brought forth long-term effects, long-term pain and suffering. And we don't want that. So God, we come to you now in the name of your son, Jesus, who died a brutal death for our healing. He died so we would not have to. He died and shed his blood and, and bore horrible whippings and stripes upon his flesh so that we could be healed and healthy. And so God, we come to you now and we lift up Joni and Lord God, that evil disease that attacked her has no more right to be in her body. She has recovered. And God, we ask that you go to the root of wherever that virus first came in, whatever the first entrance point was. And we ask that it would be sucked out. All the evil would be sucked out and that that spot would be sealed with the blood of Jesus to not allow any of it back. No more effects, no more pain. Father, we ask for Lynn and ask for her back to be healed, God. We ask that your presence, your anointing oil would drip down her head, down her spine and correct whatever is wrong. And God, if there is wisdom in there to go to a doctor or a chiropractor or an alternative medicine, God, I ask that you would put that on her mind as a forefront of something to do. God, we also lift up my other friend who's been struggling the same with COVID after effects of joint pain. God, we will not stop coming to you asking for your healing until we see the healing. We will come and beg you, not beg, but we will come and, and, and bug you every day because you are the great physician and you have said to come to you. So we will come. Even if it takes a hundred times to come and ask for healing, we will come back and come back and come back and ask you, please bring healing. Bring healing to all of those sick right now with this disease. God, put their families and their advocates in front of the doctors. Give them strength. Give them wisdom to fight back and say, no, we're not letting them be put on a ventilator. No, we're not letting you treat them this way. Raise up a standard among this nation and in this world right now. All over this world, continue to rise up warriors who are willing to not comply, who are willing to fight for truth and wisdom, who are willing to fight for the kingdom of God to be spread throughout this earth. We love you, God. We know that you are in charge. And we know and proclaim and decree you have good things over this nation. This nation is not over. This nation will not be a communist nation. This nation will stand on the truths and the decrees that our forefathers promised and sealed in their covenant with you, God Almighty, when they landed on this place. God, break off any of the things that were in their flesh when they made those covenants so that there will be nothing of the enemy that has a legal right to steal, kill, and destroy this nation any longer. God, we come to you today. We are almost in the middle of October and we are waiting for that October surprise that your prophets have proclaimed and set forth. We are waiting and watching for you to move. We believe that you are going to close the Red Sea down around the enemy and we will wait patiently and pray and decree that it come forth. God, your word never comes back void. So we are watching for you to move so that you will get all the glory and all the honor forever and ever. Amen and amen. Well, thank you all. Wow, we still got a 25-minute show in there, even though um, that verse was so short. I love it. 
Have a wonderful day. Um, if you have not watched the Elijah streams of Robin Bullock from yesterday, uh, from Monday, I highly recommend it. I know I, I did get to catch Deborah Williams yesterday. Um, her live was awesome. I just absolutely loved it. And um, I caught Robin Bullock the other day. Um, I've, I'm in the middle of that one today and it's so good. I highly, highly recommend it. So you all go in the shalom of our Lord God and be filled with life and joy as you finish your day and keep an eye out because when I get ready, it'll probably be next week sometime. Um, maybe this weekend. I'm not sure. Uh, I will let you know when we're going to start our next series. All right. God bless you all. I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.